to a graph that goes up and down like this is called a sinusoidal graph. Related to sine, but not exactly, because cosine graphs are also sinusoidal graphs. Because they do the same up and down thing, because guess what? They go through that same set of values, but as the x-coordinates that the y-coordinates went through to find our sine graph. So let's see what I have here. Now we want to find the cosine graph. So we're going to basically do the same thing we just did, except this time we're going to be looking at, as we go through the circle, the y-coordinates. So this was our sine of x. I should probably label it. So now we're going to do the cosine of x. my way backwards this time, clockwise around the circle. When I get to negative pi over 2, what's the cosine of negative pi over 2? 0. When I get to negative pi, what's the cosine? Negative 1. When I get to negative 3 pi over 2, the cosine is? 0. And when I get to negative 2 pi, the cosine is? 1. So it's about right here. So the graph looks like this, vaguely.
chances are it's most easily written as a sine graph. Or you know, we can write the equation as a sine graph. If we see that it's at a high point on the y-axis, then it'll be more easily written as a cosine graph. Now, we transformed functions. Yes? We vertically stretched them and shrunk them. What would that change in these if I do vertical stretching or shrinking? What, which one of the words will change? The amplitude, it will either get bigger or smaller if I vertically stretch or shrink. Where do I put the number to vertically stretch or shrink? In the front. So it would be here. A number here. Let's write the general. So the basic A sine of B x plus C plus D is your basic possibly transformed sine graph. And the same set of letters, A cosine of BX plus C plus D is your basic cosine graph. The A will stretch or shrink your graph. The A is going to be your amplitude, almost. So in these, the amplitude will be the absolute value of A. Why do we have to put the absolute value part? What kind of numbers can I plug in for A? All positive. I can do positive. Is that the only thing I can do? Could I plug in like negative 1? If I stick a negative 1 here, what would it do to my graph? It'll flip it over the x-axis. So it's possible to put a negative number in there. But we can't have a negative amplitude since amplitude is the distance from the midline to the highest point. And so that's why we do the absolute value part. It gets a negative off. But we can't put a negative number in there. If we do that, it will take our graph and reflect it over the x-axis. Well, what will that do to this point right here on my sine graph? It won't move it, will it? So even if I have a graph that has a point at 0, 0, and instead of going up to the right, it goes down, all that indicates is that I've got a, it's been flipped over. What does this happens to this point when it gets reflected over the x-axis? It goes to negative one. So if I have a cosine, if I have a graph and it's either at its high point or its low point, it's most easily a cosine graph. The high point is a nice positive one. The low point would indicate the negative number in front of my cosine function. And you're gonna, and you're all going, don't worry, we'll get to one and you'll see it all nice. What's the B going to do to my graph? Or, or shrink it. Stretch or shrink it horizontally. Here's where we actually have a horizontal change that we'll be able to see. What is going to be affected by that? My period. The period of the graph will be affected by B. And in general, your period is going to be 2 pi divided by B. In other words, the original period, which was 2 pi, divided by the number B. So if B is 1, we're all set. If B isn't 1, then we are either going to make smaller periods or wider periods. 